Welcome. Isn't it great to be in the freest state in these United States? It's an honor to be here. I want to thank Tomas for the introduction. What we have seen in other states over the last couple years has brought to life an old debate that some of our founding fathers had about what was the world's oldest profession. And it was a debate between Dr. Benjamin Rush, uh, Thomas Jefferson, and Benjamin Franklin. And, and Dr. Rush was a physician, so he said, the world's oldest profession is the physician. After all, Eve was cut out of Adam's rib. It has to be the physician. And Thomas Jefferson, who, as you know, uh, designed the University of Virginia, said, no, 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 no. The world's oldest profession is the architect, because you needed the architect to bring order out of the chaos in the universe. And Dr. Benjamin Franklin said, now, it wasn't the architect, it was the politician. Who do you think created the chaos in the first place? <laughs> and unfortunately, we have seen in many other jurisdictions in this country and in many jurisdictions around the world, the creation of Faucian dystopias. Freedoms curtailed, livelihoods destroyed, schools shuttered, crime spiking, and opportunities dashed. The destructiveness of these policies has been exceeded only by their ineffectiveness at curtailing an airborne respiratory virus. Issuing coercive policies based on Faucian declarations runs counter to the constitutional traditions that are the hallmark of free nations. Consigning, after we saw state after state, whether it's denying people the right to go to church, whether it was denying people the right to work, whether it was denying people the right to do basic things like bury loved ones, we saw state after state consign people's rights to the graveyard. Throughout this time, Florida stood as freedom's vanguard. We reject the biomedical security state that crushes liberty, destroys livelihoods, and divides our society. In Florida, everybody has a right to work. Every business has a right to operate. Every kid has a right to go to school in person. You cannot be fired from your job based on COVID shots, and you cannot be required to show medical papers just to participate in society. We are the free state of Florida. And I think what we've seen over the past couple years brings back uh, an old admonition that was made by President Eisenhower in his farewell address, not about the military industrial complex, which is what that speech is most famous for, but in that same speech, Eisenhower talked about how government was more involved with funding scientific research and how there was a danger that public policy could be hijacked by a scientific and technological elite. And he warned against that. He says the job of a statesman is not to allow policy to be hijacked by people like Anthony Fauci. The job of statesmanship is to harmonize all the competing interests of society, all the other things that make society function, and to weave that in into a coherent policy. And Florida heeded Ike's admonition. We protected people's freedoms, and we kept our society functioning. And the result is, we are better for it. Not only are we doing as good as we've ever done, we are far outpacing state after state after state on almost every indicator imaginable. For example, our budget in the state of Florida that I submitted to our legislature came in at $99.7 billion. To put that in perspective, the closest state to us in population is the state of New York. They have three million fewer people than we do, and yet their budget's about $240 billion. And yet we have better roads, better services, higher performing K through 12 schools, and the number one rated public university system in the entire United States. And of the $100 billion budget, roughly, we've got at least a $17 billion surplus. And I can tell you a lot of those other states are not sitting on that. And we do this all, mind you, with no state income tax and the lowest per capita tax burden in the entire United States. 
2020 saw Florida lead the nation by far in in-migration of adjusted gross income. In fact, we had more adjusted gross income move into Florida in 2020 than any state has ever had in the history of our country. And I think 2021 is gonna beat it. We'll get the figure soon and know that. And we've led the country in net in-migration since COVID started. Now, the question that people always ask is, who are these people that are coming? Are they gonna flee the bad policies and then vote for the same doggone stupid policies here? Well, uh, when I got elected governor in 2018 in November, there were almost 300,000 more registered Democrats in the state of Florida than Republicans. As we stand here today, there are over 55,000 more Republicans than Democrats. <laughs> So I think people are voting with their feet, but they're not just seeking lower taxes, because we've always had lower taxes. Uh, they are seeking to have their freedoms respected and freeing COVID authoritarianism. They're also fr fleeing to places, from places that do not respect the rule of law and do not support law enforcement. And they know in the state of Florida, we are a law and order state. When we had the riots happening in other parts of the country, I called out the National Guard immediately. We said it will not stand here in the Sunshine State, and since then I've signed legislation that prohibits local governments from defunding the police. We are not gonna let that happen. I think people also appreciate that, yes, we have a leaner budget, lower taxes, but we really apply it in ways uh, that are very effective. And this was not true when I was growing up in Florida, but Florida right now, for, for the most recent year in the Education Week rankings, we rank number three in the country for K through 12 achievement. And part of the reason we do that is because we empower parents to make decisions. We have the most robust charter school program in the country, and we have the largest private scholarship program in the country for low-income families. That allows people, uh, single moms making $30,000 a year, to send their kids to the school of their choice. And the result is, not only have those kids done better, but the school districts have done better, and people are having to innovate and compete for these students. Our charter schools, for example, we have things like classical academies on the Hillsdale College model, where you go in, and this is education that is really totally cut off the deleterious influences we've seen get involved in our education system over the last few decades. And so what we're doing in Florida is empowering parents and it's making a difference. We're also trying to get the best people we can in our school system. Over the last two years, we've increased the average minimum salary for public school teachers in this state by over $6,000. And last year, we did $1,000 bonuses for every principal and every teacher in the state of Florida. We believe that our higher education system in Florida is something that we're proud of and the fact that it's ranked number one in the country five years in a row. I don't let them raise tuition, so it's actually affordable for middle-income families, and that's important. But we also understand this. Four-year brick and ivy education is not the only way you can be successful in this country, and it's not the only way for many people. So we have expanded apprenticeships, we've expanded skilled uh, training for skilled trades more than any other state in the country. The result is you need truck drivers, you need all those other things. They are being produced in the state of Florida right now, and we're going to continue to do that. And you know what? There is honor in doing those professions. You're not any worse than somebody that goes to a university. We're also leading the nation on supporting American civics and getting the Constitution back in our high schools in particular. It's now a requirement again in Florida. And I think about it this way. Some people will go to college, they want to be business people or doctors, some people go into skilled trades, some people, there's going to be so many different paths that Florida students take, but every single one of them, regardless of that path, is going to be called on to exercise the duty of American citizenship. And it's our responsibility to provide those students with the proper foundation of understanding what it means to be an American, understand why our country was founded, understand the principles that make the country unique, and understand why that's something worth preserving and fighting for. And so we're doing that. Uh, we have a program for teachers to go through civics training. We give them a $3,000 bonus if they do it, and we will be instituting a citizenship-style test for all graduating seniors 
where they have to demonstrate proficiency in understanding the same thing that our naturalized immigrants want to do. I think it's important to do that because we oppose things in Florida like critical race theory, and we should. Uh, but you also have to talk about what you're for. And so we're talking about what we're for just as we're battling to keep those failed ideologies out of our classroom. Now, we are proud in Florida to have prohibited critical race theory in our K through 12 schools. It doesn't belong there. It's not accurate history, and we're not gonna let it happen. We're working on a parent's bill, of, expanding the parent's bill of rights so that parents have the right to inspect the curriculum and so they know what's being taught in their kids' schools. There are people in our society, unions, leftists, who don't believe parents have a right to know what is being taught in the classroom and parents should be able to seek enforcement of our state standards to make sure that they're doing that. So we're also working to defund DEI consultants at our universities and any school districts. This is a cottage industry of nonsense we should not be spending one dime of taxpayer dollars teaching kids to hate our country or to hate each other, and we're not doing that in Florida. We also oppose corporate wokeness, and you see that in how they treat some of their employees doing training programs, which are absolutely outrageous, and we believe that that violates people's civil rights, and we're gonna work to make sure that that's clarified in Florida law. We've also said to companies, Look, it's a free country. You do have the ability. If you want to stick your beacon to voter ID or some of these other things, you know, that's fine. But understand this. If you're just genuflecting to the mob, if you're trying to placate the left at our expense, in Florida, we're fighting back against you. We're going to make sure we expose what you're doing, and we're going to stand up for our people. And when they were trashing these companies, were trashing the Georgia election bill, virtue signaling, and pursuing false narratives, uh, we took note of that in Florida and say, that ain't going to work here. We did an election bill a couple months later that was much stronger than Georgia. The left had a spasm. The media had a spasm. But you know, the corporations didn't say anything because they know we're gonna fight back in the state of Florida and we're gonna continue to do that. This wokeness, it's a religion of the left and it's infecting a lot of institutions, corporate, big corporate America, big tech, the bureaucracy, uh, all these, of course, academia. Uh, it is wokeness, a form of cultural Marxism. The goal is to delegitimize the founding of this country, the principles that the founders relied on, our institutions, our constitution, uh, to tear basically at the fabric of our society. And they want to replace it with effectively left-wing ideology as the founding ethos of America. That would be a disaster. It also runs counter to what Roger Scruton warned of what he called a superstition that persists in the West that somehow human nature can just be remade and we can start anew again and dismiss all the accumulated wisdom of those who have come before us. This wokeness is dangerous and we've got to defeat it on all fronts. If you look at the agenda of the left right now, if they had just a few more U.S. senators, what would they have tried to do? Pack the Supreme Court abolish the Electoral College, make D.C. a state so you get two radical senators for life, and f***ize ballot shenanigans and ballot fraud. That is not an agenda that many Americans are talking about over their kitchen table. They're talking about inflation, education, crime, all those other things. That is an agenda of an ideological movement uh, that wants to render the conservative half of the country second-class citizens. And so they are playing for keeps, this is a very vicious ideology, and it requires us to understand what's right and what's true, and obviously that's discussed in an organization like this. But given what we're facing with so many institutions that are hostile uh, to basic ideas of freedom, uh, it requires you to show a little backbone in these fights. It requires you to demonstrate courage. When society is unmoored from the truth, those who speak the truth are the ones that are gonna earn the wrath of those who are defending the discredited regime. And so that's what we see in this country now. Uh, and I can tell you this, in Florida, every single thing we've done to make this state successful, we earn the, the wrath of the woke left time and time again, and we beat them time and time again, and we're gonna continue to do that. So our goal is make sure you're standing strong, do not back down, 
Nothing that is worth achieving is going to come easy. Uh, we are going to have to fight for this country. We're going to have to fight for our freedoms. Florida has been the vanguard and the leader, not just in the United States, but really around the world. The number of people that have written into our office is really incredible. So I will be here uh, in the state of Florida holding the line. I am going to be standing my ground. We've accomplished an awful lot in the state of Florida, but I can tell you this. We have only begun to fight. Thank you all. God bless you. and Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thanks so much.